be looking at lesson two, the axis powers advance. And if you'll remember, the axis powers are Germany, Germany Italy, and uh, Japan. And um, the United States is not in the war at this time. It's mainly Britain and France and the Soviet Union um, in this alliance to, to um, fight back uh, the Germans uh, at this time. So we're going to look at a couple of things. Number one, we're going to look at some of the key terms in this section. And the first one is Blitzkrieg. And you may have heard this term before. This was, this was a new way of fighting that no one had ever seen before. And the Germans came up with it. And it was brilliant, really. They used their air power and their tanks. And instead of, in, the, in World War I, what happened was they would have these lines and you would just basically dig a trench and battle each other and hope that you just eventually killed more of their people and you could advance past their line. But Germany uh, realized, hey, there's a different way to do this. And what they did is they came up with this really great strategy, really. Uh, find a place to break through and go straight to the heart of the country. Like, in, for instance, in France, they're going to go, and they're going to go straight to Paris. And instead of sitting here fighting on the fringes for so long, they're going to go straight for the kill shot really quickly, so fast that France couldn't get their troops moved to fight back the German onslaught. So this was a really quick method of fighting versus the slow and methodical method of World War I. The Luftwaffe was just another name for the German Air Force. So as you're reading this chapter, you're going to see the term Luftwaffe. And this is just simply what Hitler hoped to use, mainly in the war with Britain, to uh, bomb them into submission. It didn't work, but uh, that was his goal during World War II. Dunkirk, you may have seen this. This was a movie out a couple of years ago, and uh, it was called Dunkirk, and it was about these British soldiers who were uh, who were fighting the Germans, and the Germans really had a surprise attack and trapped 300,000 British soldiers on a beach in France, and they were basically there to just, the German army could have marched on them and just slaughtered them because they had nowhere to go, no retreat because they were on this beach, and the ocean was right there. And Churchill did something amazing. He called on all the people that owned boats, fisher, fishermen and different uh, industries that had boats, to go and rescue these British soldiers. So they did. And it was an amazing rescue. The Germans, I think, did shoot at them from the air. But most of the British were rescued before the Germans could get there and slaughter the British soldiers, or caused 300,000 to have to surrender. So it was a pretty amazing uh, story. The Lend-Lease Act was just an agreement that President Roosevelt had. Again, remember, the United States said, we don't want anything to do with European wars. We've been there one time in World War I. We had all these people that died. We want to stay out of it. But President Roosevelt realized that, hey, we had to help the good guys, which were the British and the French, and defend Europe against this evil dictatorships that were threatening to take over. So he, they, the Congress passed a law that allowed him to sell defense uh, materials to countries that he deemed necessary for the defense of the United States. So he started selling and lending uh, military personnel to um, not personnel, but uh, tanks and so forth to the uh, British. The next thing is just Axis domination of Europe. We talked about the Lightning War. We talked about the rescue at Dunkirk. Shortly after the rescue at Dunkirk, the, the Germans keep going into France, and France eventually surrenders. It was just a matter of weeks they took over. And then Operation Sea Line was this idea that the, that the Germans had that they would just keep bombing the British cities, the British military bases, and then eventually invade on land. But the, they never gained superiority in the air. And so therefore, they just ended up 
abandoning it. So it was really a failure on the Germans' part to bring Britain into submission. Uh, this was the line in France where they were waiting for the German armies to attack. And you can see these little pillboxes up here at the top. This is where uh, they, they, they would the soldiers would get inside this. This was concrete, and so it was not easy to bomb. And so the idea was this was an impenetrable line, and the, the Germans got around it by going through a different area, a, a forest area that no one predicted that they would, and they used this blitzkrieg. So they went straight through uh, or around these defenses that France had set up. Uh, so after the failure, this was a huge mistake that Hitler made. After the failure in Britain to really get them to surrender, Hitler turned his military might to the new target, the Soviet Union. He, um, his decision to invade the Soviet Union took the pressure off Britain. He, he made a really, if he had just kept bombing Britain, most scholars think that they would have eventually had to surrender or sue for peace. But he stopped and went to another big target and opened up the other side. So it's like fighting an enemy on your left and then fighting an enemy on your right. And he created the enemy on his uh, uh, on the east by invading the Soviet Union. So now he had Britain on one side and the Soviet Union on the other. And uh, he called the attack Operation Barbosa, Barbarossa, I'm sorry, and uh, it's where the Germans invaded uh, Moscow and Russia and it, it, there's a lot to this story it's really interesting but but he they overestimated their blitzkrieg they thought they could get to Moscow very quickly they got diverted and then they got outside of Moscow it started in the late summer early fall and they thought they'd be by to Moscow by um, mid fall and it didn't happen and so they got caught in Moscow in a very harsh winter and they ended up, many of their troops froze to death outside of Moscow. And this gave the Soviet Union time to get troops there and to fight back and eventually drive the Germans out of uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, and, and, and then the last couple of things, remember, the United States is not in this war. We're studying this as world war, but the United States is not in it. They, they are supportive of the Allies against the Axis powers, but again, the Neutrality Acts really were calls in the United States to stay on the sidelines until Pearl Harbor. In, in December, about a year into the war, Japan um, needed oil. They wanted to um, control the oil so they could feed their war machine, and the United States was not selling them oil because of their aggression in the Pacific. And so they eventually were so angry with the United States and wanted to make sure they could control the Pacific. They attacked our base on Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And uh, it was a surprise attack. They hadn't declared war. And uh, they killed around 2,400 Americans. But that was the one event that drove Americans from the sideline of saying, hey, we don't need to be in this war to getting into the war, and it changed the dynamics of the war for every, everybody on the uh, Allied side. So this was good news for the Allies that the United States was in. A few days later, uh, and the next day, uh, our president, Franklin Roosevelt, declared war on Japan. And because Japan was in this alliance with Germany and Italy, Hitler declared war on the United States about five days later. So this initial bombing of Pearl Harbor brought United, the United States into the war against Japan, but it also brought them into the complete World War II against Germany and Italy. So we're going to continue our studies of this. I'll send you questions, and have a great day.